my name is uh, Tom Riarty. I'm the principal of Adam Sound Castle Educate Together. Here we have Ethan um, O'Connor. She's a deputy principal and she's also in charge of the whole area of special education needs or additional needs. And we have Evan, who at, uh, today Hello. he's our he's at the moment he's our uh, teacher in the outreach class, but he will be leaving us next year. And he's going to talk to you about the ethos of Educate Together. I'd so like to say welcome. Um, it's an unusual place to have or an unusual way to actually meet parents, but. This is a stopgap effort. We're going to meet you hopefully the last week of August. So welcome to Educate Together. Uh, we're one of about a, nearly 100 schools in Ireland, 100 primary schools, and we also have a number of secondary schools as well. We, this school here is Adam Sound Castle Educate Together. In the Lucan area, we have five uh, Educate Together schools, and we have four in the common enrollment. Most of you would have uh, secured a place for your child here through the common enrollment. Our school, we have approximately 130 children. Uh, 16 classrooms and we have two outreach classrooms as well okay um, I just want to say uh, very briefly uh, if you're looking for information on educate together you will find us on the educate together website it's a really good booklet it's a little bit out of date because uh, uh, one part of it is about multi-denominational uh, education and it's actually we've changed it to uh, equality um, equality based education so it gives you um, a full outline of what edu an educate together school is about we're quite proud of it um, educate together schools are like any other school in the country uh, where we all all the teachers go to the same colleges we go to um, we're inspected by the Department of Education and we also follow the uh, same curriculum as every other school in the country the difference is our ethos and that is all explained in this book. So I'm going to keep it very short and uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it as well. Here you would have uh, received this by email. And this is uh, just a short, a small book that's basically giving you some idea of what we, um, what you need to do when you come to school. What needs to be, what you need to have ready for, uh, for your child. How you uh, work with absences. Um, what's the curriculum is. Do we have a uniform? Educate together if we don't have uniforms. And all of that, again, all that information is there in that booklet. So if you require, just check your email, you should have it there. So I'm going to hand you over now to Isa, um, who's the uh, deputy principal, and she's going to talk to you about uh, the area of uh, special education needs and all of that. Take care. Thanks, Tom. Um, as Tom said, my name is Isa. Uh, I'm the deputy principal here in Adamstone Castle Educate Together, and I'm also in charge of special educational needs in the school. Um, we have quite a few um, support teachers and SNAs on our staff and they are supporting children in all different areas. Um, I think if you think back to your own experience in school, however many years ago, um, there was always an area that maybe you needed an extra little bit of help in and um, a lot of our support teachers would be in class with junior infants for the first few weeks and um, getting to know the kids, helping the class teacher and we may, it may have um, an SNA in one of those classes or both classes as well, and that's a special needs assistant. Um, and that's for children who perhaps need a little bit more support in their day-to-day -day learning and their day-to-day -day activities in school. So one thing I need to talk to you, and this is really important, is about um, the needs that your child may or may not have. Um, most children don't have any needs at this point. Some maybe have speech and language issues, um, you would have been asked this question already on this admission form um, when you got your place in Adamstone. So just to uh, remind you, you were asked some questions here on the second page, or the third page, sorry, um, relating to has your child ever had speech and language issues? Have they had therapy? Have they been referred for an assessment of need or to a psychologist? Um, and have they issues around um, maybe their behaviour, emotional regulation? and have they been referred to CAMS. Now, um, if you have ticked a yes to any of these, even the speech and language, because a lot of children when they're younger would have speech and language issues and may have been referred to speech therapy just for a short period of time, um, that's fine because a lot of the time they've been, um, they've been let go from speech and language and they're, they're no longer attending. But if you've ticked one of the ones where the child, your child has been referred by your health visitor or maybe your GP, um, for an assessment of need. That's something we need to talk to you about in September. And it's really important to let us know if that has happened since you have filled in this form. Because then we, we will find out anyway by working with your child that there may be an area of need. Um, so it's better if we know sooner rather than later. 
you have the place in the school, it's not going to affect your place in the school, but it's very important the class teacher or myself or a support teacher knows about those issues if there are any. If there are not and if they've been resolved, then that's perfect. We don't need to know. But um, as September, October goes, so as we get through September, October, hopefully, all going well, um, I'll be talking to you maybe in a little bit more detail if you have ticked yes to any one of these, especially the assessment of need. It's not too late to contact us in September about these issues, but please do. Contact us before we start asking you if, if that's been the case, because it's really important we know this. Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about is... Uh, just to bring your attention to the school calendar for next year and that's going to be um, standardised for most of it and um, just uh, familiarise yourselves with that we hope that the school year will will happen as planned um, and that's on the website as well uh, again if you have any questions about that in September just ask the class teacher and then just to bring your attention sorry to this the book list at the top of the book list uh, there's a reference here to a super giant coloring book that's really any coloring book it doesn't have to be a particular one just one that's quite big so you can go to any of the shops deals etc they probably do them and um, don't be too worried about the type of coloring book it's just to make sure that the children have a book that they can color and uh, because colouring is part of the, the early years um, curriculum. Okay, I think that's about it. Okay. All right, I'm going to hand you over now to Evan, and we're really looking forward to meeting all of you in September, and we hope you'll be very happy in Adamstone Castle. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone, I'm just going to talk to you about the Learn Together curriculum. So as Tom said, we have a unique ethos in Educate Together schools. We have a unique uh, ethics education system that goes along with it and uh, the best way to explain it would be from their own mission statement which is as follows uh, the learn together curriculum is created to promote the philosophy of education in which no child is considered an outsider which promotes the fullest development of ability irrespective of gender class or stereotype and which encapsulates this ethos in a democratic partnership uniquely combining the involvement of parents with the professional role of teachers there are four strands that uh, we teach the Learn Together curriculum through, and they are moral and, morality and spirituality, equality and justice, belief systems, ethics, and the environment. Um, so, in Adamstown, we do it somewhat differently. The Learn Together curriculum is taught over a two-year period, so to make sure that each and every topic or aspect associated with that, that strand is given the correct amount of time and respect as it deserves. So, throughout the year, even though one thing that might be one topic or area that might be more pertinent to your lifestyle your religion or your belief system might not get done that means it will be done next year so the idea is that it's an objective analysis of each and every one of those four strands uh, further information on that is on the educated weather website as well and uh, tom would just like to say one last thing okay just quickly and briefly um I didn't mention the Parents Association, just picked it up there. Uh, the Parents Association, parental involvement is a big thing in Educate Together. We have, we're very fortunate over the years, we have a really good Parents Association, some really committed people have done a lot of work here. A lot of this unseen, but uh, very valuable and very good for the kids. Uh, it helps out the kids and the children in their education. Uh, with regard to September, the um, starting back in September, we, we're still waiting on the guidelines from the Department of Education of exactly what is what's required of us before we open. So um, for now, we're opening on the 31st. Uh, the school opens, the gates open here around quarter past eight. Just for now, the gates open around quarter past eight and school starts early about um, at 8.40. And kids normally would line up outside the, uh, the front. Uh, for a number of weeks, about two weeks, I think these are the two weeks, they finish, yeah. the uh, junior infants will finish early, okay, yeah. at 12 o'clock. So, um, we will be in contact with you again. Um, with clear, once we have a clear idea of what exactly is required of us, we do have a plan, uh, but we can't really push that forward until such time as the uh, department uh, gives us some guidelines. So again, as Eden says, and um, uh, we'd like to say thank you very much, and we really are looking forward to the new junior infants and their start, uh, their start of their own formal education, which hopefully is about eight years inside here. Okay, so bye bye, and uh, thank you, Ed. And Hi. And Katie's behind the camera, so thanks, Kate. <laughs> okay. How to prepare your child for junior infants and information about their first year in school. Getting your child ready for school. 
Fostering independence. Here are some things that you can do right now to help your child become more independent. Ensure that they are able to put their shoes and coats on independently. Ensure they can zip it up, tie the buttons and fix their sleeves. Encourage your child to use the toilet independently and get them to wash and dry their hands after use. This is such an important habit to develop for the children. You should encourage them to practice opening and closing their school bags and packing their lunch boxes. They should practice putting sheets into folders because they will be doing that quite a bit in junior infants and it's a good skill for them to have. Give your child some chores to do over the summer months. For example, emptying the silverware in the dishwasher, tidying their toys away and tidying away their lunch at home. All of these things will help your child to become more independent and will help them ease the transition into starting school. What to pack in your child's school bag and lunch box. Firstly, it's very important that you choose an appropriate size school bag for your child. There is no point buying one that is too small that can't fit the things that they need to bring to school with them. And it's also no point having one too big where they can't carry it. We encourage you to put a change of clothes in their school bag, an extra t-shirt, some underwear, trousers and socks. Accidents happen at school all the time and we have found that children are a lot more comfortable when they're changing into their own clothes. To dry our hands after we wash them in our school, we use a face cloth. We ask you to ensure that you have a fresh face cloth in your child's bag each day. Of course, you will need to add their lunchbox and drink into their school bag. Again, practicing opening and closing their lunchbox over the summer months will really help your child. Our school has a healthy eating policy, so we don't allow greasy food or soft drinks. We do, however, allow a small treat on Friday. We encourage reusable plastic bottles for water, and we have a strict no nut policy as there are children in our school with nut allergies. Getting ready for the first day of school. Label books with your child's name on the front cover of the book. These will then be stored in school. Ensure you've labelled their coats, hats and scarves. Lots of children may come with the same coat or the same hat and it's important for the child to know which is theirs. All children's Pencils, glue sticks, etc. should be labelled and kept in their own pencil case. The first day of school. The class teachers will meet the children at the line. Don't worry if some children are upset. They may just need time to adjust and parents will be contacted if needed. For the first two weeks, the day will run from 8.40 until 12 and the children will have one lunch break. After this, the day will run from 8.40 until 1.20 and the children will have two lunch breaks. Curriculum areas, English, Irish, Maths, Geography, History, Science, Art, Drama, Music, Learn Together, SPHE and PE. Let's take a look at some of the things that the children will cover in English in junior infants. From September to December, we focus on pre-reading, phonological awareness and oral language. We don't jump straight into reading and writing. We use books, we tell stories through pictures, we show the children how to look after books and how to use a book. We encourage the children to ask questions about the stories they read and to read as a hobby. We focus on pre-writing skills fine motor skills such as colouring, cutting, tracing, using play-doh, lego, blocks and tearing things. That will help develop the muscles in the children's hands and will make writing easier for them when it comes to learning how to write. Nursery rhymes are so important in both English and other languages. It helps the children hear sounds and hear rhyming words and all of this is very important for their language development. We also develop oral language skills throughout 
junior infants. And we recommend that the children develop these skills in their own language. If they can understand in their own language, they can transfer that skill to English or to any other language. All language skills are transferable. Maths. From September to December, we focus on early mathematical activities. Things like matching, sorting by size, colour, objects, shape, making sets, comparing and ordering, colours and the odd one out. Later in the year, we focus on the numbers 1 to 5 and counting from 1 to 10. We also look at patterns and shapes. And throughout this, we develop the use of their mathematical language. Gwelga. This is a new language that the children will be learning. They all start off at the same level and they do really enjoy it. Children will be learning basic conversation and vocabulary, which they find extremely enjoyable. There are 10 different themes taught using strategies such as games, puppets, songs, rhymes and actions. The children really do enjoy Gwelga in junior infants. Ashter is play-based learning. We use an integrated framework for geography, science, history, art and drama. English or a language, maths, SBAG and learn together are also integrated into this framework. Our themes change monthly and there are usually five to six different areas where the children can play in groups. This could be role play, small world play, sensory play, building and construction and art. The children really learn so much and here are some of the benefits of learning through play. It's great for their social skills and group interaction. It boosts self-confidence and self-esteem. It's very enjoyable. It helps the children become problem solvers. It fosters a sense of independence. It strengthens their language abilities and it encourages imagination and creativity. It really is so beneficial for all children. Illnesses or injuries. Teachers supervise yard and there is always a teacher designated to first aid. If your child has a head injury or anything serious, we will call home. This is our school policy. It is so important that you provide the office with up-to-date contact details in case of an emergency. If your child is sick, please keep them at home. Also, if they have any contagious illness, please inform the school.